Welcome to a, an introduction to the beam sphere. We, this is a, an early prototype, but we are finalizing our design and just waiting for uh, printed circuit boards for that design. And soon Kala will be assembling and sending out the first set of beam spheres to our beta testers. So I thought I would just introduce you to the basic design concept and how to set it up. And in another video, we'll demonstrate some more of the features. So this is obviously a prototype board. It's the, got some handmade parts here and, and uh, some, some battle wounds here, some mark that I was using showing where my IR receiver is and some uh, misplaced holes for the emitters. But this will still give you an idea of how everything is laid out and how it works. So we do have in, in the sphere, we have two IR emitters. One is a long range emitter and with a narrow beam and the other is a wider beam emitter that will not have as, as long a range. And anything that you send will be sent through both of these. I believe there is also going to be an option for an external emitter that's plugged in, um, but uh, we'll talk about that later. So, and the IR receiver is back here. The final boards have uh, 3D printed parts to position, hold everything in place and including the, the RGB lights, which are on top here. And this is the uh, RF rece receiver and the RF sender. So when you first get the beam, you'll need to configure it to connect to your Wi-Fi network. So being a wireless device, it will only have one wire connected to it, which will be the power supply. And this is actually very important that you use a good quality power supply. It needs to be exactly five volts and it should be able to ideally output at least one amp of current. This one is a has a 0.7 amp output, but it's a good quality one and I haven't had any problems with it. If you use a, a cheapo one or one that can't provide enough amperage, it, it'll really mess you up because it'll seem like it's working well, but, but then things will start acting in unexplainable ways. And uh, whenever that's happened, we've figured out that it's because of, of the power supply that we were using. And that includes most USB power ports on your uh, laptops or desktop computers. Don't waste your time with those. Get a good phone charger. So when you first plug your beam in, it'll, it'll turn red to show that it's booting up and it'll try to connect to your network, but it won't be able to because it doesn't have information about your SSID and your Wi-Fi password. So it'll go into this mode where it's hosting its own hotspot and it'll turn blue to show you that that's what it's doing. When it's in this mode, then you need to, to use a, a device that's capable of Wi-Fi so that you can connect to this hotspot. So you can use a, a phone or a tablet. In my case, I'm going to use the laptop here because it's easier to capture the screen. So you need to go and look at your available wireless networks. So as you can see, my home network is a TP link. That's what my laptop is connected to. So what I need to do instead is connect to the Beam Wi-Fi. And you should give it uh, a couple minutes. And if it's unable to connect, you can try again. Once everything is configured, the we haven't had any Wi-Fi issues with the, with the Beam connecting to your router, but when Beam is hosting the Wi-Fi hotspot, sometimes you need to try a few times and be patient. And you might need to uh, unplug the Beam and plug it back in again. So in my last three or four tests, I had no problems connecting, but now of course it's not working. So you get to see what you need to try and do to get it to connect. So I've power cycled the beam by plugging, unplugging it and replugging it, and I'll try again to connect to it. Okay, so as you can see, it can be a, a bit of a pain the first time, but we were able to connect. And 
Now we want to go to open up our web browser and type in the IP address of the beam. Now when it's in this administrative mode, the IP address will always be the same. It will be 192.168.4.1. So enter that into your address bar, hit enter, and you'll get the main menu of the beam. Now we want to go into the device setup and wait for the page to finish loading because it's scanning for your available other Wi-Fi networks. And that can take a minute. As you can see, it found my TP-Link. I should maybe, maybe point out here that if you're using a phone, you may, it may look more like this and you'll need to scroll down to see the available networks. So the best way to make sure that you enter the SSID exactly right is to just click on this link and it'll automatically copy the SSID into this field. And then you need to enter your wireless pass password for this network. So that's the Wi-Fi password for my TP-Link router. Now you have an option of either using DHCP or entering a static IP address and all, and all of this information manually. I strongly recommend that you enter it manually so that the IP address of your beam is always the same and you know where to find it when you, when you wanna connect to the web pages or send commands to it through the web interface. So the net mask, uh, this is the subnet mask, will normally not change. It will always be 255.255.255.0. The gateway will be the IP address of your router. So in my case, the TP link is at 192.168.0.1. And then your IP address will have the same first three numbers as your router, and the final number will be one that you choose. It should be one that is unique, that no other computer or device on your network is using. So for me, I know that 200 is clear and is not being used, and I can click Save and it'll reboot now, the red shows that it's booting up. And now instead of turning blue, it flashes green to show that it successfully connected to the Wi-Fi network. So as you can see, it did that really quickly. And now anytime, no matter how long you unplug the beam for, when you plug it back in, it, it reads your configuration data and will quickly connect to your Wi-Fi network. Now that it's connected, you need to enter the IP address that we assigned to it. So instead of ending with 41, it's going to be 192.168.0200. That'll bring us back to the main menu of the beam again. So we can still access the admin menu if we want. So for example, we could change the name of the beam or we could enable different types of events. The name of the beam is significant mostly uh, because when events are generated, the, this name will be used in the event. So I recommend that you don't change it for now because we'll be sending out some sample configurations for Vox Commando that are based on the, this event name. But if you do have multiple beams in your house, you may want to give them different names so that you know which one is generating events. Go back to the home screen here. Since we're talking about setup, I guess it's a good time to mention that we do have over-the-air updates now, which is really great. It's been great for development, and it's going to make it a lot easier for us to push out new versions of the firmware to you. So there'll be a file that you can download off of the website, and all you need to do is go to this page, click Choose File, and, and select the file from somewhere on your, on your computer. Click update and it'll in a matter of a minute it'll it'll update the firmware and, and restart. So that's pretty exciting and it's going to make it a lot easier for us to uh, implement changes from our beta testers and whatnot. So that's it for this demo. Uh, I'll follow up with some more. This isn't really a demo. But I'll follow up with real demos showing you uh, events and learning infrared codes and playing with the RGB lights. So until then, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the forum.